ability to have services that are you know, that we deploy that are spread out across multiple clouds, right? Mm -hmm. Discover makes it so that you could do this in a really easy um, way, right? It's pretty simple to deploy. I'll, I'll show later how to get, you know, or I'll show in a little bit uh, an application that's using three different cloud providers um, and the applications deployed there with a couple of different backends, and you'll see how things kind of work. It's pretty neat, um, and it, it, it's really not too complex. There, there are other ways to do a lot of these things, um, but with Scupper, it's been around for a little bit, uh, and it's 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 relatively simple to get the ability to do this hybrid cloud, to do this multi-cloud um, type of connections within your Kubernetes cluster. It's pretty neat. Nice. OK. Um, sorry, I've got some issues with the plot going on right now. They got very angry to, to some stuff. Um, oh, really stream bot. Yeah, good, good, old, good old bot. Uh, I've also got some reports of some drops, um, frames, and or buffering. Sorry about that. I think the, uh, OK. Um, yeah, again, sorry about the, the, drop, the drops and all. Um, I also am recording this. Uh, so if this does interest you, um, the, it will be up on YouTube after the fact. So let me stop sharing my screen. And then, um, Brian, how about you share yours and kind of give us a, an overarching story of what you'd like to show off? Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Let me see what we got going on here. So let me just share my screen. This might be a little interesting. All right. So. Yep, we were seeing a lot of different stuff here. Yep. Uh, are you seeing my console now, maybe? No, we're seeing. Oh, two. man, no. Yeah, you're sharing everything right now. Oh, that's, that's really weird. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Uh, let's stop that share. Sorry, and it's, you know, my first time to share my screen ever in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> there we go. There All right, go. this should be this should be pretty good. Um, so let's see. So obviously, straight into the terminal. Let's see how this stuff goes. So. Uh, I have these three different clusters. So I've got one. That oh of course no no I'm not saying set up all right <clears throat> might take a little bit longer than that it's all good um, if everyone uh, has any questions or comments please don't hesitate to put them in the chat um, while as Brian is setting all this stuff up so we can make sure that we got some time to talk um, I'll post something right now just to make sure everyone sees that too. Um, let me go ahead and put up the top secret for you, too, there. Yeah, that's probably helpful. Oh, nice. I like it. Oh, man. Where, where did you grab that? That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, it turns out I just, uh, so I'm, I'm in the process uh, with COVID happening and all, um, you know, there's there's not a lot of TV shows coming out right now, just to be frank. Um, yeah. So I decided to rewatch uh, all of Stargate. So I started at the movie at the very beginning, and I've almost gotten all the way through SG-1, and I got into um, Atlantis at the same time uh, again. So I'm, I'm at, I'm at to the second season of Atlantis, uh, season 10 of SG-1, and I saw the SGC top secret thing um, on, the, on the ground, and I actually just Googled for it. I'm like, image for top secret for SGC. And I just copy pasted it down, and, and saved it, and now whenever I hit my, my it's actually a, a, the you know the little triangle with the circle on the top button on my stream deck. I just hit that, and it puts up the top secret stuff for me. Oh my god, that is the most awesome! I love it. I love it. Uh, I think I, I need I, I freaking need to get that set up like that. That's perfect. Yep. Okay, I think that I'm okay now. I just had to export my cube. Uh, yeah. All right. Cool. I'm cool. We could get rid of that. There we go. I need to. Uh, I need to get a. I need to get a stream deck. Get some of 
that. So I forget some buttons so I could set that up. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So let me go into the path where my stuff's at. Probably should have been there, but it's all good. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, I have a couple of these contacts that I have. Because like I mentioned, Scupper allows you to deploy applications in a multi-cloud manner. So that means that we're going to have multiple clouds or multiple Kubernetes clusters, at least. Um, I have OpenShift clusters, uh, but this would work with Kubernetes as well. Um, and you could mix things together if you needed to. Um, so but hold, hold on. So you're saying Scupper is like a layer on top of a bunch of Kubernetes clusters. So I talk to Scupper, and Scupper finds the resources it needs to run the container. Question mark? Yeah, yeah. Let me. I'll I'll show I'll show the end result. I think first, and then let's let's get into how pieces work together. At least how I understand. So. I'm just going to go OCD route, and I'm going to grab my routes that I have. So I've got a front-end app, mm -hmm. and then I have a controller. Those are the two things that are important to me. There are the edge and the router, and those are important to how Skepper works and what things go on under the hood. But whenever I deployed this, I didn't think about anything. I, I, I didn't know any of that stuff. So I'm going to switch back over to uh, my browser window. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and throw that in here. No, okay. Let's see. I think you should be seeing my browser. Yeah, cool. Yep. Looks good. Uh, just sorry, guys, for the Twitch del delay. So this is the front end application. And what's going on here is this front end app is going to talk to a back end app service, right? The front end app is only deployed in one location for this demo, but there are multiple back end, uh, back end services. So if anybody is watching the stream, if you guys want to hit this URL, totally do it. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. And throw some things into the, uh, throw some stuff into the, um, the request bar and send the request, and you'll be able to play along while we're going. Can you put that uh, in the, the chat for us? Throw it in the chat. So what we can see here is I've got a test, and I could you know do one, two, three, four, five, right? You see people that are throwing in beer. Hi, that's pretty awesome. And on this, we could see that we have a worker. We've got a Corpus application, and the service, the backend service that we're using, the cluster is called RHPDS. So this cluster is running on a service that we have in Red Hat that's called RHPDS. Um, so <clears throat> that's pretty. That's pretty interesting, right? Let's see what we could what we could do with that though. So if I go back into say the console and maybe scale down that RHPDS backend service. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to switch back to my screen, and I'll set the context. Use context, RHPDS, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll do OC get deploy. And you can see in here we have one scaled up of this back end. So let's just do a scale and scale that down to zero, right? Mm -hmm. So it should be gone now. And if anybody's playing along, and if you keep trying to do stuff, you can see we killed the backend service in our HPDS. We got rid of it. It's not there anymore. But hopefully if everything is working right, the app should still work. So we can see test. Now we're going to K5ACK, right? So this is a service that I have running at my at my house. I have a bare metal OpenShift cluster that's running here, right? I'm running a hybrid cloud setup, just an on-prem setup, an RHPDS setup in the cloud that I got rid of that backend server or service. I didn't need it anymore. Uh, but there's also another one, right? There's also another one. 
what I kind of want to do, and this is interesting, and I'm not sure if this is really going to work. We'll see. I haven't tested this. But I'm going to go over here. I'm going to actually kill this thing. So hopefully you guys still can see. Let's see where the webcam is at. I don't know if you can see my, uh, my desk. It's kind of it's kind of hard. There's my thing. Let me take off the headset. Kind of weird. Might be hard to hear me, but I'm gonna unplug the Ethernet from this guy. I'm gonna kill this whole entire cluster. Four machines back here. One or three of them. Sorry. I got all the Ethernet cables. The other one fell behind the desk. Oh, that's we really could get to do some cleaning after the stream, huh? <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Uh oh. I think he knocked himself off the internet. Oh no. Man. Oh no. He really did knock off his internet. Oh no. Yep. Okay, well. I guess I'm gonna be doing some uh uh, filling in some dead air, I think. Um, according to this, he's still here. Oh, hold on. So that's true. Um, but yeah, so so from what we can see, it's a uh, it's a it's it's pretty it looks like it's pretty straightforward. Um, our goal was to actually. Uh, get this running off on the IBM cloud, where I have an open source cluster myself, um, and we're going to probably, uh, hopefully, attach it to that cluster he was talking about. But yeah, I think I think he's ready to take out his internet. So let's let's see how quickly he's capable when it comes back. Um, there is something. So I I genuinely didn't do the research before this. I believe it's razzy.io. So, um, oh, there it is, Razzy, wrong one. Um, R A. Hey, I should be hey. back now. Yeah, so so my my you know I, I, my my laptop all connected to the single USB port, right? Oh, so no. of course, moving the the laptop totally ruined it. Ruined oh, the cool. demo. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I I tried to fill in the uh, the, uh, the data there of a couple of nice fun little songs. Oh, by the way, did, did it work? I don't know. Uh, no, no, I don't you're, back. Back. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just back. That's that's why I did the uh, <laughs> the, the clap and the clapping. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping it works. So we'll see. So you guys saw I unplugged the uh, I unplugged the three Ethernet. So my whole entire bare metal cluster it's dead. It's gone. Yep. Um, and that's what we were on. And I should be sharing my screen now. I think. Yes. All right, I'll refresh, one, two, three, send the request. And where did it go? Uh oh. So obviously it broke, dang. <laughs> Let's see what's going on here. Let's try to figure out what's wrong. It's always fun when things, don't, when things break. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're seeing me now. You're seeing me. Yeah, so we're seeing you. So let's go, let's see, I'm going to switch over to the terminal. And let's see what's going on. So sorry, I did test this out earlier, but you know, whatever, things happen. So let's change the context. Use context and set this to the AWS cluster, so C. This is the main cluster that's running the front end app. So, so let's see what's going on. We got a deployment available here. There's nothing because we scaled that down as we expected. 
We have the front end. So let's see OC logs. Oh, this front end. Mm -hmm. So it looks like things are okay. Should be working fine. So let's run this one service. Let's see what's going on. Status. We'll talk a little bit about this stuff. So it says that it's connected. One service is exposed. So that should be okay. <clears throat> let's see what else. Let's try to go back to the switch this out and see. I keep doing that three size angle window. So this is the console for Scupper, what's going on under the hood. Not necessarily part of the demo, but either way, still cool. So on here we could yeah, go. Should we should we be worried about those little orange or yellow question marks by health? No, so there's no health check defined on these, uh, these apps okay. or this demo. So I, I didn't define any health checking. Okay. So on here, we should have, let's see, we got two services. The cloud back end should still be OK with the hybrid TLC. So it's still picking that up. The HYB is the AWS one. So that's our front end app. And that's only deployed in one place. So that should be OK. So if we go, maybe I need to refresh and try it again. Or maybe I need to kick it for a second and do OC delete uh, the front end app. <clears throat> Sorry, you guys can't see what I'm doing real quick, but it's not going to be. I'm just doing OC delete pod hybrid cloud front end to kind of kick it to see if it'll start back up. And let's see how it looks. So if I refresh here, no workers. So I officially oh, broke it. That's not good. Is there is there like a, uh, a possible like split brain problem here where we have too many of the leader nodes, if you will, down. So it doesn't have, it can't, like there's, there's not, like to the point of you saying there's no workers, right? So is there like an SCD kind of thing that tells where everything is and then Scupper hands it all out? Or is it kind of like Scupper constantly pings everything to make sure everything's there? How, how, like, it sounds really bad, but I'm gonna ask the question, like by taking down just one bare metal instance, you broke this whole thing. Yeah. That doesn't seem like something that should be right. Like, what, what should have happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So taking this down should make it so that basically the thing will adjust and start sending services out to um, the other cluster that's also available that does have this back end available and running. So that's what should happen. <laughs> Let me. Well, I do have. If we want to spend some time, I can't type. Um, I do have a Kubernetes cluster and an OpenShift cluster. If you want to try to get Scupper working on those two to see if we can redo this, or I'm more than welcome to, or you're more welcome to continue to try and debug this. Oh, things happen. So, yeah. So obviously. The problem, or not obviously, the problem that I have is right now, Scupper is working as, as expected. I didn't reset the environment before I did the demo. That's what's <laughs> the problem. So let me reset it real quick. So the problem is the one cluster that I expected to still have the backend deployment was scaled down to zero. Oh, well, OK. <laughs> and, like, Obviously, right? I, well, I don't know if that's the exact, you know, if that's going to totally fix it, but that should fix it because that was the issue, or that is an issue. Mm -hmm. So let's see. One, two, three. If I try it again, there we go. There we so go. It's, it's back. So sorry, guys. My fault. <laughs> I had two fails in the demo. Dang USB port. And <laughs> this one third cluster was not up. 
So scuppers working as is expected, right? So we've got the the third cluster that's available. I can type stuff in here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and if I want, I'm going to just go back and scale the um, original cluster back up, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to scale the AWS cluster um, back up so that you know we have two two available clusters. Okay. So to do that, I'll go back into my terminal and I'll do use contacts. And I'm going to switch to the AWS and I'm going to do scale and set that back up to one. And what should happen is Scupper is smart enough to realize that the front end application is running in AWS. So the requests should start being proxied, or not proxied, but passed back through the AWS cluster because that has the lowest latency between the two. Oh, interesting. So it's pretty neat, right? Yeah. So it has so, situational awareness. Yeah, so it's, it's doing some smart stuff with that, right? And if I scale it back down, it'll go back to RTPS. I'll do that real quick, you know, without showing my screen. I don't want to have to mess with that real quick. but. It should be switched over again, and things just fail over back over to RHPDS. Nice. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's a really simple setup of how we could tie different services. This could apply to many different things, right? This is a service front end that's running on the AWS cluster that has an exposed uh, uh, service or exposed load balancer port, which is what I passed into the chat. Mm -hmm. And that connects to the back end, which is in the same namespace. It just knows, all it knows is hybrid cloud back end, uh, dot cluster, dot, you know, whatever the, the namespace is and all that stuff. Um, that's all my front end app knows about. It doesn't know anything about Scepter. It doesn't know any of that stuff. It doesn't care. All it knows is I need to talk to the back end service and it discover handles that transparently. It's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. Nice. Nice. So you were saying, JJ, weren't you, that you have another cluster that uh, maybe we could add to the mix? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. so cool. Give me two seconds here. I need to log into it. Man, I can't believe it. Like, I, I need what, what I need to do. So, future note, I need a longer USB cable, number one. <laughs> Second thing, re always reset your demo. Dang. Yep. Although, easy fix. I'll take that any day, you know? <laughs> What's the saying? Um, uh, you should create a bash script that resets everything before using can do like reset.sh. So, it puts it into the state you want to before any development or any uh, demo or anything like that. As we always have had, uh, here is our the the um, open source cluster on the IBM cloud um, that we've always used, and it's just sitting here, so we can absolutely connect into it. Uh, copy link. Uh, oops. Gotta hit that security oh. button, man. That's fine. Somebody, <laughs> it's no one's gonna steal that one. Uh, Okay, OC project or a new project? Should we just need a new one? Yeah. So when you when you set up a new dash project, so when you set up um, this, it just places all the things into whatever namespace that you know you're using. So if you put everything in a separate namespace, then it's pretty it's pretty easy. It's pretty nice. Nice. Um, so. so Yep. The first thing that you need to do with this is deploy um, the backend application because all you're going to do use this cluster right now is to to deploy the backend service. So I have a link for you. Let me grab it real quick. <clears throat> 
probably should have been doing that while you're doing that, but whatever, it's all good. Um, so I'll put this into the Twitch chat because anybody could grab this. That'd be awesome. If you guys want to check out the application to try this yourself. Um, so there's this hybrid cloud repo that we have. And in here, there's a couple different backend YAML. You'll see how you'll see it once we pull it out. <clears throat> Sorry, give me a second here. All right. So you're logged into the cluster and the CLI. So what you need to do now is uh, you can deploy um, the backend AZR, GCP, or Minikube. The, all these backend services, all these YAML configs are all the same. The only difference is the names. So if you want to change, yeah, change to go to the Minikube and then go down towards the bottom, there should be something, maybe search for Minikube, and you could change it to like IBM Cloud. Yeah, there you go. Worker ID. It's just a, it's just like an employment or a. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, I created we're, a new one. We yeah, need we're that. Gonna, yeah, there you go. IBM Cloud. YAML. But yeah, the only difference between these YAML files is this environment variable that the backend app picks up on. Perfect. All right, done. Uh, so just do OC apply or group CTL apply uh, that YAML. Like so? Mm -hmm. okay. Cool. So that looks good. And what you need to do now is you need to annotate this. So Skyper will pick it up. Mm -hmm. So uh, you could do OC annotate service. And A N N O T A T P O T O T E T A N N O T A annotate. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's called or is it the service hybrid cloud backend? So hybrid dash cloud dash backend. Hybrid. Oh, sorry, sorry. OC annotate service. We want to annotate the service hybrid cloud backend. Okay. Uh, and then space. Uh, and now we need to do scupper skupper.io slash proxy. Uh, equals HTTP. Good. Yeah, that's it. Cool. So that just yeah. added a label or an annotation to the service of scupper.io slash proxy. And but we haven't actually we haven't installed scupper yet, right? Not yet. Go that's ahead. the next part. Yeah. So now what you need to do is install or or not install, but download the Scupper CLI uh, tool. Um, should be pretty quick to do. Let me send that into. It's uh, let me send that into the, the chat. Since you're on Mac, uh, that should be the command that you need to use. Yeah, that works. It's the same thing. Cool. So you got that. Yep. Cool. Um, so what you need to do next would be run uh, dot slash scupper space init. Sorry, scupper. Oops. Slash, dot slash scupper init. Uh -huh. Cool. So Scupper is now initialized. It should there's there's it's not connected to anything because I have a configuration a token 
uh, file. So I got to figure out how to get that to you. Um, but once we get that over, uh, this token has the authentication. It has it has some some off stuff so that it knows where to connect and you know the secrets and stuff so that um, it's the connection is secure. It sounds like wire, a wire guard kind of connection, right? Yeah, it's similar. Just, like, yeah. Ultra simple, nothing too crazy. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so let's see. How are we gonna? How am I gonna give you this? Maybe a email a YAML file. Yeah, it's fine. You wanna do that? Okay. All right. Let me throw that. Oh, wait, no, hold there. on. Aren't you on the um? Uh, just do the uh, the Slack team that we're both part of. Where are you? Oh, yeah. I should be able to do that. There you go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of course, my authentication is so. I just sent you a message. Yeah, I know. But the problem is I'm not um, the guest account. I don't think that's it either. Oh, there it is. That's why. So what happened is my Slack uh, auth timed out. Getting there. So this is just going to be adding the uh, uh, another backend service, right? Once once we're done with all of this stuff, I'll uh, I'll show you some of the config of how to like actually get this started. So that should be pretty neat. Okay, so copying the token. All right. So sent, so you should have the token now. Okay. So I'll put up the secrets. And go in here. And open. <coughs> The oh. YAML D. Yep. Paste. So you could see like in here, like some of the stuff that's in that file. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to check it out, like there's the CIA certificate that got just generated whenever mm -hmm. this was there. There's um, some TLS certificate and key, and then there's the the um, edge URL and all of that stuff. So no, don't apply it that way. That's not. So how we need to use it is we run uh, scupper, so slash, uh, or dot slash scupper um, connect, and token.yaml. OK. So we're connected to, that was one of the routes whenever I did OC show or get routes. That was one of the ones I said I wasn't necessarily interested in. You can see you're connected to two other sites. So you're connected to all of the clusters that are up and running. 
if I still had my bare metal cluster up to you, it would also connect to that as well. Just because the way that um, Scupper works is it connects to all the things. There's a way to make it so that this could be like an edge node and it only connects to one of the services or one of the clusters if you need. Um, so you could define kind of how your topology looks or whatnot, but either way, you're connected to everything. So now things are connected. You have the app running and you've added that annotation into that backend service. So stuff should just work. So you want to share your screen and bring up the app and you can see, yeah. see my, my version there? So let me, let me go back and share my screen again. And I'll first, just because what it's going to do is it's going to try to use the same, um, the, the AWS uh, cluster, and then it might try to use the RHPS one if that's closer. I'm going to scale the sound. So first I'm going to do, let's see who am I, let's see where I'm at. Okay, cool. So I'm on the AWS cluster. So let's do scale. So set the back end services for this one down to zero. And then let's do use context search PDS and scale that down. All right. So now they're both scaled to zero. And if we go in here, IBM Club. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So if other people went and added stuff in there too, it all be getting past the IBM Club. So it's ultra easy to add nodes. It's it's also inverse ultra easy to create the whole into you know to create the initial node. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the one of the niceties, one of the benefits that I found with playing around with Scupper Scupper a little bit. It makes it really easy to deploy a multi-node application. And these services, they don't need to be exposed publicly on the internet or any of that thing. This backend service that we're running is not exposed. It's not publicly exposed. It's running within a particular namespace. The front end apps obviously exposed through the load balancer or whatever, but the back end part, which is what we're scaling through this multi-cloud setup, isn't doing any of that. On my mind, I see the, the beauty of this, right? Like I see the advantage, but I'm skeptical, right? Like, like now, now we know for a fact your app right here is running on the uh, AWS cloud. The only thing that can take any service is the one that we spun off on IBM Cloud. There's got to be latency problems. There's got to be those types of problems out there, right? Like, like I, I couldn't imagine, like, you have a geo-distributed Kubernetes clusters like all over the world. Like, it, it make, this is too good to be true. That's my, that's, that's what I'm getting at, right? Like this. This seems like too too good to be true. Like, you know, you just did That's a good problem to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Um, I mean, there, so yeah, obviously, there are a couple of things here. Um, so this was set up, uh, and we have the, the, the master node, right, that AWS node. Um, I'm not quite sure what happens when that fails, right? I guess I could try taking it down and we could see what happens, right? But everything's going through the front end app on that node. So maybe maybe let's try, you know, maybe we'll try to um, deploy the front end service on another one of these scupper nodes and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Because that that would be one issue, right? That I could see with you know the failure, you know, tolerance. Because failure tolerance would be if that node fails, then what happens? You know, that was the initial node that I set things up on. Yeah. So if that fails, well, let's see. Um, so I'll try that. Obviously, yeah. So there is some kind of you know latency there. Uh, the the AWS node is having to go and communicate to the IBM cloud node and all that stuff. But generally, you wouldn't probably have the 
backend service scaled down in the, the the main production node or whatever, right? And your backend mm -hmm. service might be in like a DR type of mode or something, right? So that could be one way you could use this. Um, and there's also some other config that you could maybe handle how some of that stuff goes. Right now, just using the default setup, and you know, it's 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 doing its thing. So there there's some things that I could I could get that. But I think for the most part, like it's it's ultra simple to set this up. It's ultra nice to get multi cloud going on. Right, it's pretty cool. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. Okay. So what do we want to do? We want to try to. Yeah. Try to should you touch in on the AWS one first? Let's, let's, let's just go ahead and, you know, put a bullet in its brain or whatever, and let's see what actually happens. And then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. But I do want to show, uh, just to make sure that everyone sees, um, we are being good citizens. Uh, I am, I've added right. the, I'm just about to put the PR in for me and Brian, so we now have the IBM Cloud example. So. Heck yeah. <clears throat> Good enough. And you are there. There we go. Oh, nice. I love it. Me and Jay are now a part of the official get commit message. Yep. <laughs> One less thing to worry about, right? <laughs> that's, dude, that's great. Nice. All right, cool. So while you're doing that, I'm going to grab the screen right. and start uh, tearing this down. Although the first thing that I need to do, I guess, would be adding the front end app to the Arch PDS cluster because we still need a front end app. Uh, yeah, anyways. Yeah, yeah. So, so in, in essence, what you end up creating is probably. Well, would you like philosophically speaking, would you put like the global load balancer up and then put a bunch of front end apps around and then use Scupper to talk to the front end and also the back end? So when you hit a global load balancer, whatever Kubernetes cluster is close enough to you, it would go to that one to make sure it's okay. And then the back end would have its own Scupper instance, like doing that stuff too. Yeah, I think so because that that gives you some of the value, right? So if you have a global load balancer or a, a global server or GSLB load balancer that's doing that segregation, right? Us being in Texas, we might get put into whatever the central server is, right? It's it's the closest. That's the front end that we hit, and that's handled by that load balancer, right? And that external load balancer doesn't know anything really about the other services that aren't exposed in Kubernetes or OpenShift. So all it knows is I got a front end, this is the closest one to me, done, that's what's going on. Well, these back end services are also there, right? So yeah, everything's all in that one, uh, one cluster, but this would allow you to scale out. Um, maybe if there's maybe maybe there's some config for load and things like that that you could do in Scuffer, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. To be able to handle, you know, maybe the back end is a little bit loaded or whatever. Again, I'm not sure if this is a thing, but that could be something that you know would make this a little bit more valuable too. You could you know, scale out if that one central backend service is loaded up or whatever to some of your other components or other clusters that you got going on. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the, the documentation right now. And just for fun, put that in the chat. Um, it doesn't really say per se. Like, this, this very quickly becomes very complex, right? Like, like as you start thinking about how you would do this in the real world, there's yeah. so many things going on that it's again paranoia, right? Like, too many things. Okay, there we go. So the yeah. front end app 
talking to the IBM Cloud service that we have because that's the only backend service that's open, right? So that works. What do we want to do? Do I? I guess I'll just delete the namespace. That way, the idea of this cluster is still up if I needed it. If we want to sure. show it back up, um, but this will delete everything that's a part of that. So let's use context AWS. So OC delete project, um, and then let's HYP. There we go. So now the original project with that had a Skype service in the back end and all that stuff should be deleted. Mm -hmm. Let's see if the app still works. I don't think, although it might, it might, I'm not sure. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, so no, it doesn't, it doesn't work because that's the master that's a part of it. There might be ways to have multiple masters or whatnot, I'm not sure. So, so there is something that needs to own the database of the known entities inside of Skype. Yeah. That's what we've got to the yeah. Yeah, it seems it seems that's that's true. So yeah, but still, it's pretty awesome, man. Like no joke, this was really really cool. Yeah, that's not, that's not how it all came together. Yeah. So what I guess that is the one issue with I guess this demo that we had to set up, but I'm sure that could somehow be worked around. Um, but I guess let's. I go to the next part. Let's try to maybe set up a new setup so you can see how everything kind of pieces together from the start. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, so, so do you? Do we want to? I guess we could put the uh, service on the IBM Cloud, but the, make that the main. The main node, or do we want to put it on the I or RHPDS one? It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, let's, let's do it on the IBM cloud just so I can continue playing with it. Um, cool. Let's see the... Okay, so first thing first. Um... Okay, um, so I am OC new project scope. Master? Sure. Yeah, that would work. Copy Scupper to here. Just so it's here, so I don't have to do that again. Okay, so what's the first thing? So the first thing really would be um, deploying that the front end and the back end application service. Okay, so then we do. Um, OC apply dash F backend. Um, get check out. Sorry. Back on the master, man. Yeah, of course I have it. What can I say? IBM Cloud. Check. Oh, crap. Ah! Because people are watching me. Okay. Uh, OC apply dash F uh, back in IBM Cloud. So then can, cool. So then I can go to the front end directory. No? Uh, the front end directory, there's a back end. Or there, yeah, there's the back end directory and the front end directory. That's the actual app that you're deploying. So if you want to build the Java files or whatnot, you could do that. Um, but there is just do, uh, just do, no, 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 OC apply dash F front end YAML. Because okay. it's already built or whatever. You could do new app and all that stuff if you need it or whatever, but it's already built. Oh, it's already sitting on Quay for us to pull down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, just, to, just to confirm, um, we go to the projects here and um, we can spend quite a bit of stuff on there. What do I call it? Uh, Skyper Master. OK. 
Haiku. Two pods. And if you go, you could go to go to service or uh, just do go back to the terminal. It's probably easier this way. And expose the so do OC expose service, and then uh, hybrid dash south dash front end. Hybrid cloud 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 dash front end. Hey man, I will take not being able to type any day rather than unplugging your laptop from everything. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, let's see, get out. Get out. And you should have the front end service if it all works. No, something isn't happy. Let's see, get water. Let's see, get all. Let's see, get your logs on it. It could hmm. be. How do you, so. Port 8080, I don't think I did that. Well, the, the, so, so the pod is exposed on, or the pod has port 8080 is the, the port coming in, and that goes to a service, which is set up as type of load balancer. So that might be weird in IBM Cloud, I'm not sure. But we could just add a, add a new service and just make it a standard service and expose it and use the standard OpenShift routing stuff, maybe. No, it looks like it's formatting properly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and you have an external egress load balancer IP. Hmm. The route. Like, this should be just a standard thing. Hybrid cloud. Oh, that one works. There you go. It just took a minute. What? Maybe. Oh, look, I'm going to HTTPS here. Oh. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. All right. Mm -hmm. Cool. OK. Uh, and if you throw something in the box, it should work. Yep. But obviously, you only have IBM Cloud because you don't have any scupper or setup at all. Yes, correct. Wait, wait, hold on. Yes, wait. Yes, yes. Be because, because we don't have scupper set up, we only have one worker in the same namespace that the front end namespace is sitting on, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this front end, this uh, hybrid dash cloud dash front end is just looking for the hybrid dash cloud dash backend service in its namespace. That's all it knows about. It doesn't know anything else. Got it. Okay. Even with that, even when Scupper is set up, that's all it knows about. Scupper just handles some of the stuff transparently to it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Cool. So um, let's say let's take another step and go. So you need to next add the annotation. Okay. Oh, where? Sorry. Uh, you need to add the annotation to that back end, like what we did before. It should be the same thing. Yep. Okay. So again, that just adds the annotation to that one uh, service that's running. So cool. That still doesn't really do anything with your setup scupper. It just adds an annotation there. It should it should work with kind too, as long as kind can talk to the main master IBM cloud node, which it should be able to. It should work. Yeah, I'm spinning up kind now, so we can come back and we can install that as another worker. Yeah, right? and then and then we can probably add new one of yours just to, just to, just to walk through all of this, right? Yeah. All right, cool. So while kind's coming up, you have that annotated. We need to initialize the discoverer. Um, or initialize Scupper on this namespace in IBM Cloud. So you do Scupper, 
uh, init. So same thing that you did before. Um, let's see, it's now installed there. There, there is, so what I did uh, with that command was I added a dash dash console dash off un or, uh, unsecured to that command. You saw the scupper uh, console that I had up that had a couple of the different things. Mm -hmm. um, I just added unsecured because I didn't want or I didn't care about you know logging in or doing any of that stuff, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you don't need that right now. So that's good. We should be good. The next thing you need to do is uh, generate the token.yaml file. Okay. So you do scupper, um, let's see, scupper, where is it that? Connection dash token and whatever the file name, you know, whatever, whatever .yaml or whatever you want to call it. IBM Cloud Scupper .yaml or whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Cool. So now that generated the CA file and all the thing that are needed. So you got local DNS set up for one node, but not your laptop? Yeah, I'm lazy. I know. <laughs> I'm the same. I have like local DNS set up for a couple of things, but not everything. I need to I need to get off that at some point. Yeah, it's just a thing. What? Uh, Can we call it? Can I... That should be right. Ask for it. Connection. <laughs> I'm not going to fight, fight this thing. Uh, secrets. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's copying and pasting not going to work. Oh, no. Ah, crap. Um, SCP from your laptop to Skippy. Go the other oh, no. way. Oh no! No, Xcode is open. Crap! <laughs> <laughs> ah. I love it. I love it. Xcode. Like when I used to do Android development, I was always working with you know Java files or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, like Xcode always, always wanted to be like, hey, you remember me? I'm on your computer. <laughs> it's so true. So true. So true. Like, man, I only installed Xcode because I use Homebrew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stop bothering me. I don't need a. I don't need the iOS um, uh, emulator right now. No, I don't need it. I'm not running an app. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, eventually, like I played around with Flutter and stuff, and you know, got like, got that app cross-platform or whatever. But <laughs> then, like Xcode's fine, but. Normally, nope. Oh no, this is a Linux box, so I'm gonna have to do. Oh, there it is. Huh, that's helpful. Um, then go over here. We need to do getting started. We need to do the Linux version. Oh yeah, you do you need the Linux version of Skype, right? Yep. All right. There it is. Cool. Perfect. Okay. So now I have Skype and the connection.yaml on that side. So cool. now 
Um, yeah, okay, what, what, what's, our, what's next? So uh, the cluster's up, right? So create a new namespace. I don't think you did that yet. I mean, oh, I guess God, God. technically this would be fine just to you know use or run out of the default namespace. Like, there's no issues doing that, but it's always nice and clean to, to not oh, use the default name dash the namespace space. Okay. Cool. And then uh, after you've done that, we need to deploy the back end. Um, so, kubectl, all oh, right, yeah, you got a clone in it, don't you? Yep. Catching up, I'm getting there. Just taking That's me a minute. Good. Copy. Get clone. This guy. To the hybrid cloud. Um, so I can do... Uh, mini cube, I guess. Mini cube, mini cube, almost kind. Yeah, exactly. Uh, make sure you do dash n. Oh, good call. Good call. <clears throat> Back in cube. Dash n. Okay. Cool. Okay. okay. Then the next part would be to uh, annotate that. Oh, good call. So, annotate. Um, because this isn't, can we just use kubectl annotate here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should be the same command. Uh, except, I guess the difference is you also need to add dash in. No, call. But everything else is the same. Hybrid cloud backend scope. Okay, cool. that's right. Yeah. Uh, so the next part would be to apply initialize, the... right? Initialize scoper. Oh, we can't just connect it. We have to initialize it, then connect it. Yeah. Okay. So you do scoper and it, and I think that there's a dash dash namespace. You could do dash h after doing an or init and c, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Maybe it's to do this, you might need a does it need a so to be honest, I haven't played around with the mini cube or local stuff with this yet, but it should work. Well, I mean, I, I have this, this, Yeah, this is just a, this, like, I'm not, it's not exposed, it's just a Kubernetes cluster, but Docker, right? That's what kind yeah. is. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, it's just sitting here, but it's not going to give a whip up. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if you need to, like, provision an ingress or something for it. Oh, OK. Hang on. Or maybe maybe because this is a mini cube, there you maybe this one you need to da add dash dash edge. Okay, well don't forget this isn't like I haven't even done the connection yet. I'm just trying to initialize, right? So oh, dash, add dash, 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 dash edge and try that. I think that's what this is for. Oh, that looks better. Yeah. Okay. Because like this is a mini cube that other things can't access, so it's I guess it's technically an edge in terms of what discover the things. 
Cool. Okay, so, so it's connecting. So now we can do the dash scupper connect connection. Uh, no. Scupper connect um, space uh, the connection, connection by and then dash in. Scupper? Yeah. Oh, shit. I think it might work. Uh, it does take a second. So, like, this will. I guess provision, well, the initialization provisions, some pods that are in there, there's like the edge, or there's a load balancer and some other things that it does. So let's see. So everything that you put in that right now will be going off the IBM cloud one, because obviously that's the closest or the lowest latency, you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's still container creating. Pulling yeah. it down from the internet, so it's gonna take a minute. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty it's pretty neat. This is a cool way to do you know multiple you know you could I guess apply this to a lot of different things. It doesn't need to just be applied to you know the service or whatever. I think. So you could use this for a bunch of cool stuff to connect to different clouds that aren't exposed, I guess that's what I meant to say, mm -hmm. um, externally. So that's cool. Some real workforces. Like if you just yeah. have a bunch of despair uh, Kubernetes clusters all over the world. Like what I, what I was really worried about is that I thought I might be stepping into Raz, Razzy, um, this, this multi-core. So this is, believe it or not, this is actually the app that the IBM Cloud uses to administer all the Kubernetes clusters on the IBM Cloud. Oh, so this is like how it does, what is it? The shared, uh, or how it works with the control plane and the, the backend nodes or things, or yeah, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Yeah, exactly, all the master nodes and all, everything, all the, the, so we have, we, our, the IBM Cloud is, Bunch of Kubernetes clusters, controlling a bunch of Kubernetes clusters that we, in essence, leased out as as our Kubernetes clusters, right? And Resi yeah. is the open source project that came out of that management plane. And uh, oh, as you cool. see, you run a process of resources across multiple clusters, environments, and cloud providers. So the idea was that Resi is is like a command and control, which is not exactly what Scupper is, right? Scupper is for services across multiple clouds, where Razzy is a management, a management layer for those actual Kubernetes clusters. So they can actually work in tandem, if you think about it, where yeah. Razzy is the, the control plane, where Scupper makes sure that everything is talking to one, other, one another underneath it, which would be yeah. a really, really interesting conversation to have at, at scale. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's neat. I'm gonna have to check this out a little bit more to see how that works. Yeah, um, it's a, it's it's pretty it's pretty slick. Um, the, the, I will say, um, I have played with it a handful of times, and it is uh, very situational. That's the okay. that's one disadvantage of it is that the people who are need to think about using Razzy are usually like there's probably a handful of people on the planet will ever get to the size that Razzy would be actually useful for them. Yeah, right, right, right. Like if you only have three clusters, like yeah. do you need automation management to manage those three deployments or, you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. and, and that's the harsh reality of it, right? Like it is a brilliant tool, but it's one of those problems that the scale is just so massive that the majority of people that we would talk to on a day in day out basis, this is just so far down the line of their business that it's, it's not even sometimes worth communicating with, but it's always good to know that when you start talking about that scale of Kubernetes clusters to standardize across your whole fleet of, of your enterprise, Razzy is very, very well fit, worth that conversation. But does Razzy help like, you know, say that you need to create a, like cluster automated on demand and yeah, you could like use Razzy to provision that thing, you know, and it's ready within half an hour or whatever it is. 
numbers and it just happens. I don't even have to think about it. I'm just using Razzy to do it. Like if I need an ephemeral cluster, I guess is the way to put it. No, no? That, no, it's it's more kind of like the way, the way that I got Razzy wrapped around my head. By the way, if, uh, if anyone's watching at home, um, the reason why this is taking so long is that it's literally a machine behind me, like on a really slow box. It's, it's a bunch of Docker containers pulling this stuff down. So this is going to take a little bit of time. So it, it's not broken. It's just taking a really long time. So it's running on Raspberry Pi. Well, it's a little bit better than a Raspberry Pi, but <laughs> it's, not, it's not that yet. Anyway, um, <laughs> I digress. Uh, Razzy, the, the really neat thing about it is that if you do buy in a whole hog with Razzy, you get yeah. a real CI, CD environment with it where you can programmatically update manifests that will touch every single one of your clusters. So if you had a deployment of a standard app that you needed to do, bad example, but just gonna use it anyway, Datadog, right? You needed a, a, a cluster-wide Datadog monitoring. And yeah. it, has, it has to be like, you have version X, and they come out with version Y. In theory, you just change that one manifest in the GitHub repo, to, for instance, version Y. And Razzy is smart enough to constantly ping that, that repository to be like, oh, it's version Y now. I need to pull it down the new manifest. I, run, I reply the manifest and I apply it throughout my whole infrastructure. So I don't have, to, like, you don't have to touch it anymore. Uh, okay. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. So it helps with, like, management of workloads and things that are, well, not just workloads, but things that are running on the cluster. To make it so, or on multiple clusters, yeah. To make it so that things are uniform, but it like probably uses simple configs to be able to push out that stuff. Exactly. Like, and, what do I think? And like back in the what is it like Active Directory, right? Yeah. Like pushing that with you know like you know Windows boxes or whatever, but you know Active Directory management, AD server to push that out. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's not it's not like. Again, it's such a large like the, the the cost benefit of it is at such is at a point of scale that, for instance, that's the reason why IBM had to write it because we run a cloud and we have a lot of these things and we need uniformity yeah. across all of all of our infrastructure, right? Which makes sense. But when you talk to like random customer out there and they're like, "I want to go cloud native," you're not going to bring up Razzy right then and there because that will just scare them off because they're yeah. talking about something so so massively large compared to what they're just trying to grok at the moment. Yeah, they, they, they're not they're not deploying like a thousand clusters that need to have data docker as an yeah. example. Exactly. Yeah. But it, it is, I, I will give you, I will give you the, um, the, the JJ seal of approval though, Brian. Um, it is worth playing with, if anything, just so if you do start to talk to those customers, those Fortune 50 companies or whatever that are looking to move towards this, it is a it is an open source project, right? Like it's, it's totally you can totally use it. Um, oh yeah, it, it, it's worth at least having situational awareness and enough to play with it to see. Oh, actually, this really isn't that bad. And if you put the infrastructure around it to make it shine, it's it. I mean, it runs the IBM cloud. That's you got to say something there. Yeah, no, I mean, that's ultra neat though. Like, it, it definitely is. Like, if you get to the point where you have over so many clusters, like, this is this is a pretty cool way, I would say, to like push out uh, an operator to go and install whatever. You know, if you want to provide, like, we want to give people the ability to have pipelines on all of their certain or uh, Tecton on all their servers or on the, all their clusters, like that's a standard offering. We have all these clusters that we're managing as our IT for you know all of the, the different business units of our company. Like, let's go push out Tecton to everything. Mm -hmm. Like, this exactly. is cool. Yeah, and that's valuable. That's neat. Cool. Well, um, so let, let's go ahead and just take a quick few minute break. Um, I my throat is killing me. I need some water. Um, cool. I'm gonna put the be right back sign up on. Uh, we aren't going anywhere. I want to actually see this work before I let Brian go today. Um, because honestly, Brian, we always have to ship something, and we've already shipped a PR, but I want to actually see this thing work. So if you don't, you know, how to okay. yeah. uh, while, while you're getting water or whatever, um, send me the, the 
config.yaml or whatever the connection.yaml to. Okay. Yeah. So I'll add that way I have it so we can like add one of my clusters or whatever and and get that going. Perfect. All right. So I'm gonna hit the BRB and uh, give us about five, ten minutes, people. Uh, thank you for sticking around and um, see you guys in a few. Cool. Be back. All right, we're be right back. So let me get you that guy real quick.
one sec. Hey man. All right, here we go. Okay, I think people can hear us. I think we're live again. Yay. Uh, yep. Yeah. Thanks, thanks everyone for sticking around. Um, or if you haven't, if you're just coming in now, uh, welcome. Um, I'm starting to think that uh, the um, kind instance of running this is not working. 19 minutes of container for creating. Um, that is, yeah, what's that going is, on? That is uh, not voting well for uh, for our. our uh, Oh, God, no, how you doing? Um, that is not boding well for our, our narrative here. Granted, this is a Docker container, or this is kind, so, you know, kind is not designed to. But, hmm. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder what the heck's going on. Weird. Uh, yes. Uh, Do I have any stuff on here? No. Uh, no, the load average isn't crazy or anything. Uh, yeah, that's not even that bad. Um, I mean, you still have memory. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Well, okay. Well, not a lot of memory for you, but. Yeah, but uh, like, isn't the buffer or whatever? Like, that's still a part of it, isn't it? Well, isn't that the joke that no one actually knows how to read top? We all lie about it. Yeah. <laughs> we, all, we all say that we know how to read top, but we actually, none of us actually do. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Yeah. Like, uh, the, the, what, what, are, what is load average for real? Like, I mean, is it good to have a lot? I don't know. Like, like I, I, know, I know the joke about like the load average used to mean whenever process was waiting. For CPU time to do the work, but when we got multi-core core processors, then you have to start dividing how much load you have by how many cores you have. Yeah. You, but it's still not truly accurate or something like that. So it gets it gets really crazy. How does hyperthreading affect that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it, just, it, gets, it gets even worse. And by, by the time you're like, "Fuck it, I'm done." Like I don't, it's just, it's just too much here. It's like <laughs> is my computer, is my fan on or off? Do I need to worry about it or don't? <laughs> if I see a load average of like 600, then I'm gonna have a problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, good. Yeah, so like, yeah, weird. well, at least with HTOP, you get like something graphical that you at least understand. But as you can see here, like that's. It's not bad. I got two cores. I mean, it's a really old machine that I just use and put random stuff on it when I need to. But like, this isn't bad. Yeah, right. You still have you still got a RAM? The heck? It's like, stuff. Uh, what can we do to check out what's going on? Is that a deployment, maybe? There might be. There's a yeah, load, but what is that gonna? Oh no, that's actually loading the image into it. Like into oh yeah, that's not, yeah. <laughs> that's not what we want. Yeah. Like, what would be nice to pull it down and then load it in, so we don't have to do it through this thing. But whatever. <laughs> If you do, if you do like kubectl, like describe the pod or the deployment, maybe it'll have that router. Yeah. It's yeah. On the router. Because I would imagine it's probably going to say something's not right. Oh whoa! No pipe. Oh, that's right. Pod. Get cube, get deployments. 
Oh, wrong name. Oh, yeah. Wrong name space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, duh. <laughs> that still doesn't work. Oh, there we go. go. Oh, wow. So some things so, are actually bad stuff is happening. Unable to attach amount of volumes. So maybe there needs to be some kind of volume. Oh. Uh, well, kind is a fully. Yeah, yeah kind should, should be fine. Huh. The attached volume is token. Like, what? No PVCs. Yeah, let me see no if I have any. Well, since you're the, con the connection dot YAML. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't have any PVCs or PVs either. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. Well, yeah, you did send me the connection. Let me let me connect my cluster. Make sure I got it downloaded. Cool. It doesn't look like I, many people. Um, like I literally Google discover for kind to see if there's anything. Um, remotely close to it, and doesn't look like it. Well, like they did, they did try, or they did do it. I wonder, do you have to pass an edge when you do the connect? I don't know. Let me try. It. I'll try to. Let me try to get this. I'll add it to mine. So I'm going to take over the screen to share. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading I am, um, huh? I'm reading through docs right now to see if there's anything remotely close. Okay. Uh, so OC new project scupper. Cool. So the next thing would be to OC apply. Um, OCP for cloud backend dash. Uh, let's go there. So cool. So now this has the backend service I need to annotate it. Uh, cool. So now we're annotated and I need to initialize the scupper next. So the next part would be Init. And then let's just pass this in. So if we init, we have this, we have edge, which you did. I don't think. I mean, I don't necessarily need to do any of that for this. So let's just go with the basic. So we're now there, and then we need to do scupper. Let's see what's available. So scupper, we could do what you did was create. Uh, connection token, and then you try to do connect. So scupper connect what's available here. So the only config here really is the connection name. If we want, you could provide a cost. So we could say if this is a higher cost or whatnot if we want to. But there's yeah, there's no edge or any of that stuff in here. Mm. So I, I don't know, that's weird. Um, 
Yeah, there we go. So we're connected to one other site and uh, we're exposed. Nice. So you, you should be, I don't have the front end out, but um, if you share your screen, you should be able to use my back end. But you would have to, I guess, scale down IBM Cloud backend to make sure it works. I don't see you as a worker. It won't shut up until it gets, or until it, um, it won't shut up until it like gets that request or until it needs to get that. Like that's part of the front end, I guess. And the front end will populate, that's like part of the Java code. Um, so it won't know until it receives a response from one of the backend pieces. Okay, so OC could, scale, no. Yeah, yeah. OC scale. Mm. This one? Uh, scale deploy, deployment. No. Hybrid cloud backend equals backend equals zero. Uh, no, no. Uh, so, so OC scale deployment uh, space dash dash replicas. That's right. I guess rep that could probably be before or after. I don't think it matters, but yeah. There we go. Yay. AZR, I just need to update that. But whatever, yeah, either way, cool, it works. Yay. Um, and it looks like everything Scupper talks about is specifically using Minikube, not kind. And Minikube is famous for being a little bit more resourcey. Like it's an actual okay. VM with like an actual like cut up and whatever. So um, it's possible that kind, you just can't do it with kind because of the resources required. So we might have just. It's weird. Like, I mean, I, I have seen somebody do this with Minikube, mm -hmm. but it's weird that they wouldn't. There's got to be something weird with kind. I'm not sure. Maybe it doesn't work though with kind. Of. Well, I mean, we found something, right? Like, it'd be worth putting an issue in to say, hey, like, we tried doing this with kind to do as a POC, and um, after 31 minutes, our Scrubber router did not start. Still not coming up. Yeah. 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 But, no, but in all seriousness, though, this is, uh, we, we, I felt like I've learned a ton here. And um, this, this, this was really good. This was really, really good. Yeah. I mean, also easy to connect services. So, like, if you need to do a demo where you're connecting different services or class clusters, or maybe you have limited amount of resources and you have multiple clusters that you're using or something like that. Like Scopper is really easy to tie these things together for the for the basic setup, and it's you know a secure connection across paths. Like it's using a CA with TLS and all this stuff, so it's doing good stuff in terms of security. Um, so yeah, I mean it's cool, it's easy. Sharing there you go. sharing Postgres. So like if you have a, your Postgres, you know. You know, data that you're working off of, you know, maybe up somewhere and you got a front end, hopefully, and you don't want to clone the database over or whatever. You could yeah. do that and connect it in like read only mode or random stuff. Like maybe that would work. Yeah. And I'm throwing this you're not exposing, you're, like, you wouldn't expose the database on the internet, right? Like this is going through this, this proxy. That's cool. Yeah. yeah like, I put it in the um, Twitch chat. Uh, it looks like this is the natural progression after we've learned how to, to do what we've done with Scupper so far. This is more of a practical narrative that you like. And they also seem to have a, a MongoDB one too, and replica set across it too. So um, it looks like they've at least thought about real world stories with this, um, which is kind of like, where is it? Where did it go? It's a really good image. 
or not. Sorry. But anyway, point being, um, it was good. Awesome. Um, well, I think that's basic to say we successfully uh, got our goals done, minus figuring out this work on kind or not. Um, but I'm going to let this keep running in the background to, to see if that maybe it'll work. Finishes. Maybe, yeah, maybe, Send me maybe a message. Six, <laughs> maybe it just took six hours. <laughs> but um, well, we'll see. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Brian, you got anything else to say before we say goodbye? No, I think I think I'm good. I think I'm cool. Um, yeah, we'll have to figure out figure out the next one. Absolutely. And, get uh, JJ back. I got yeah, not JJ. Get Jay back on the call. Everybody's name starts with the J, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> there you go. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here next week. I'm taking a vacation. So, if you are, if you check call or uh, watch for. Um, Red Hat and IBM next week. Unfortunately, like I said, I'm going to be gone. Um, but the week after that, so we got two weeks to really think about this um, to come up with something, something new to play with again. Um, cool. Just, just, or, or for that matter, if uh, you have any other thoughts or whatever. Oh, that's someone to throw. Okay. Well, that was perfect timing. I guess we'll say goodbye then. Perfect timing. <laughs> See you guys.